Hello, um, today we're going to talk about closing entries and the post-closing trial balance. It's Jerry again. So what I've presented here is we've got um, a partial worksheet for a Woods Company and we have the income statement columns, we have the balance sheet columns, notice the $4,600, that means that there is a net loss in that company for this particular period of time, which is a year. And then I have posted the closing entries onto the worksheet and prepared a sample post-closing trial balance just to make sure everything's going to work as it should. So for right now, ignore the closing entries and the post-closing trial balance, okay? So the first requirement is to prepare an income statement, a retained earnings statement, and a classified balance sheet. So if you still need some refresher, you could go through here and take uh, each account. So cash is an asset on the balance sheet, and it has a normal debit balance. Um, and then you can go down and you can do accumulated depreciation might give you some grief. It shows up in the assets on the balance sheet, but it has a normal credit balance. And that's how we reduce the asset equipment. Um, accounts payable is an asset on the, oops, let's try that one again, why don't we? Accounts payable is a liability on the balance sheet and it has a normal credit balance. Um, common stock and retained earnings and the dividends will all be um, stockholders equity items on the balance sheet and they um, the stock and the retained earnings have credit normal balances whereas the dividends stockholders equity balance sheet but it has a debit balance because it ends up in reducing the retained earnings. Okay, revenue is revenue on the income statement and it has a normal credit balance and all of the expenses will show up as expenses on the income statement with normal debit balances. So if you need that refresh, go ahead and do that for every account on the worksheet and then you're not going to make mistakes hopefully. So the items that go on the balance sheet are typically listed first on the worksheet. So it goes in financial statement order to a certain extent, but not totally. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to do is go and take our income statement accounts and put them over on an income statement. So notice that our our uh, check figure is $4,600 net loss, so let's go to the financial statements and see what they look like. The very first one we prepare is the income statement. Remember that it is for a period of time, so I'm going to pull up my revenues. I'm going to pull out all of my expenses from my worksheet, and sure enough, I end up with a net loss of $4,600, and I should probably get that labeled, shouldn't I? There you go, it's labeled now. All right, after we prepare the income statement, then we can prepare the retained earnings statement. It is also for the same period of time because it will include that net loss. Let's go back to the worksheet for just a second. And our retained earnings, remember on the basic worksheet, this is the beginning balance. So this would be the balance at January 1, 2000 X1. So 14,000 is the beginning balance because it does not have the net loss or the dividends in it. Okay, so back to the financial statements. Beginning retained earnings, I should probably put a date there. It is 131 X1. Okay, so the beginning balance is $14,000. I'm going to pull over my net loss from the income statement. I'm going to pull the dividends from the worksheet. They were $7,200. So my ending retained earnings balance is $2,200. Let's see how that reflects on the worksheet. So in retained earnings, notice I have a box for these two lines. 
because it takes two lines to get the retained earnings to the to the twenty two hundred. So it has a normal credit balance of fourteen thousand. It has a net loss and dividends that are going to be closed into the retained earnings account, and both of those will end up decreasing earn, retained earnings. So that means they have a debit, and then you end up then with a credit normal balance for retained earnings of $2,200. So they're not in great shape on that. So by the time we've done the income statement and we've done the retained earnings statement, we've taken care of all of these accounts at the bottom. So what we need to do then is to put the rest of the uh, rest of the accounts in the balance sheet where they go. So if we go back to the balance sheet, we have um, a classified balance sheet. So within the asset category, we're going to break it down into current assets and property, plant, and equipment because that's all we have for this particular problem. Um, so cash, accounts receivable, and prepaid are the only three current assets we have, and they total seventeen five. Notice a dollar sign at the beginning of the column, an underline at the end of the column, and then we've labeled the, to the total current assets, and it's the start of another column, so it has a dollar sign. Property, plant, and equipment the financial statement presentation is very important for that. FASB tells us that we have to show equipment at cost on the face of our balance sheet. So I'm going to show equipment at cost of 28000 and I'm going to subtract the balance that's in the accumulated depreciation account because that shows that we have used that equipment to make money. The difference is 19400 and that is the net book value of the equipment, and it is combined with the total current assets to come up with total assets of 369. So that's our check figure, okay? Because total assets must equal total liabilities and equity of 369. So we go back to the worksheet, pick up two liabilities. And the total liabilities are 147, and actually that one needs a dollar sign as well, and not the zeros. Okay, so we have 147 for total liabilities. Our equity consists of the common stock and the new retained earnings balance because this number needs to be the retained earnings for this date the end of the year. And if you notice on our statement, that's exactly what it is. So retained earnings is $2,200, which makes total equity $2,200 combined with total liabilities. We'll go back to our check figure of $36,900, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so the purpose of this one is closing entry. So after we have done our financial statements, then we can do our closing entries. So back to the worksheet. Our closing entries will close out our temporary accounts, which are the dividends account, the revenue account, and all of the expense accounts. So we have four closing entries to do. The first closing entry, okay, and they're always dated. The date for every closing entry is the last day of whatever period of time that you're closing. In this case, it's a year, so it's December 31. So we're going to close our revenues first. Remember, revenues have a normal credit balance, and the objective is to get a zero in the revenue account. So I will debit the revenue, and I will credit a new account called Income Summary. The income summary account is simply a holding account, if you will, for the revenues and expenses so that they can be closed in one number as the net income or net loss into retained earnings. So I'm going to show the posting for this. We have our service revenue um, T account and it has a credit balance of 44000 and then I am posting my debit for my closing entry and so now the revenue account has a zero balance which is exactly what I want and I'm going to go ahead and paint it yellow so I know that I've taken care of it. The income summary posting 
So we have a new account for income summary, and I'm going to post the forty-four thousand. So I'll, and that represents revenue. So I will just leave it at that for now. Our second closing entry deals with expenses. So expenses have a normal debit balance. So to have a zero in each account, I want to credit each individual expense account. Let me backtrack. If we had more than one revenue, we would debit each individual revenue account because you have to get rid of every account that's on your books that's temporary. And then after you have credited the expenses, you can come fill in the total that is the total expenses that will be debited to income summary. So as we post it, the income summary gets a debit of 48.6. Repair expense gets a credit of 5400 and notice that the debit of 54 was already in there because that that's what's on the ledger. So now it has a zero balance. Depreciation expense gets a a credit of 2800 and the 2800 was already in it. So the zero balance is what we're looking for. After we post it, insurance expense has a credit of 1200 and that offsets the begin the balance that was previously there of 1200 debit. So now it has a zero balance. Um, salary expense gets a credit of 352, which offsets its previous balance of 352. So it also has a zero balance. And so, uh, utility expense is 4000. Well, we did that one wrong, didn't we? Hmm. So let's go, let's delete that number and, and we'll delete that number and we're going to go pick up the correct utility expense from the worksheet and I will pick up the closing entry from the closing entry and now the balance is zero again, which is what I want. Um, Okay, so that closes out revenues and expenses. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to close income summary account into retained earnings. So the balance, if you take revenues of 44,000 minus your expenses of 486, that gives you a balance of 4600. Um, excuse me, the balance, let's let's work on this again. The balance is right here, and it is uh, plus the 44 minus the 48. So it has, let's see, I, need, I always get this wrong. Okay, that didn't work. Let's do it all over again. Delete. All right, balance equal minus this minus that. That's not what I want. Darn it. So equal. That's a plus. See what that does. All right, I need them just opposite. That one needs to be the minus. This one needs to be the plus. There we go. And now. I don't want that. My balance will be, we're going to add the debit, subtract the credit just because it'll work. Okay, so now I end up with a zero balance in income summary. I apologize for that taking so long. So what you have to do is you have to do the T account for income summary, put in the revenue, put in the expense, Figure out what the balance is, and that is this number right here. That's the balance. Okay, and then you've got to close that balance out, which is with the credit because it's a net loss. Notice that retained earnings gets a debit of the 4600 The beginning balance was already given. Now we put in the net loss. 
And so the last thing we have to do is to close out the dividend account. So dividends will have a normal debit balance right there. So in order to make it a zero balance, I need to credit dividends for 7200 which I have here. It offsets the debit and gives me a zero balance in dividends, which is what I want. So if I credit the dividends to get rid of it, that means I will reduce the retained earnings, which makes sense because that's what we do on our financial statement for retained earnings. So I'm going to debit my dividends of 7200 I combine the loss and the dividends with um, the beginning balance of 14000 and that gives me an ending balance of 2200 which matches what I did on my financial statement for retained earnings. That's what's on the balance sheet for retained earnings, and that is what is on my post-closing trial balance for retained earnings. Okay, so that takes care of the closing entries. Uh, to summarize, I have a zero in income summary, revenue accounts, all of my expense accounts, and my dividends account. The retained earnings account does not have a zero balance because it's a permanent account and that is the account that we close out our net income or net loss for the year and any dividends that we paid that year. So this one is totally updated. So the last thing we need to do is a post-closing trial balance. So after everything is posted, we have zero in the dividends account, all the revenues and expenses, which is exactly what we want. So the only accounts we have left are balance sheet accounts, and that is what should show up on our post-closing trial balance. The post-closing trial balance also has a um, date of as of a particular day and time. And I go back to my same reasoning, it's got the cash account on it. Cash, that's the balance for that day and possibly that day only. So any statement that has cash on it has an as of date. So it would be the post-closing trial balance, the adjusted trial balance, the regular trial balance, and your balance sheet. Okay, so I think I got them all there. And notice we have only balance sheet accounts, no dividends, no revenues, no expenses, and we're good to go. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you, and I'll come back in the next one. Next video will have a uh, some explanation of the classified balance sheet on it.